Right. So welcome, welcome everyone to our Connect with Gato Expert series. Uh, this is our space where we talk about all things mindset, wellness, and relationships. And I love to bring you incredible experts on and all these topics, people that are thriving in their fields and in their own personal lives. I love to share uh, what people are doing behind the scenes and how they are applying the principles that they teach to their own personal lives. So this interview is going to be a conversation between me an incredible woman, Stephanie Peterson, where we are going to just talk about how self-care equals success. So, oh, sorry. Hi, Tiffany. Welcome. Hi, love. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone joining us or catching the replay. Hello, hello. Hello. So to answer your question that you asked before we went on record, the way you and I were connected through is through a very special soul, and that's Chad Hymas. Oh, yes. My brother, Chad. Yes. So funny story. I've been introduced to you several times through social media. Different people have, have, you know, shared your work with me and said, oh, this, this girl would be great for your uh, connect with God or this, you know, this one, this girl talks a lot about the same things that you talk about and you guys should meet. Uh, and I always saw you on social media, but then one day, our mutual friend Chad posted a picture of your wedding. And he mm -hmm. said, uh, so happy for my sister that is getting married today. Mm -hmm. And I emailed him and I said, is this actually your sister? Like this is this, I didn't know that she was your sister. And he said, no, no, but we are very, very, very close. Mm -hmm. And he said that to me, I, I had just had him on. I've actually had him on our interview twice now. And he's so wonderful. And I said, you know, good people attract good people. So if she is a friend of Chad's, then she's probably everything that she has cut out to be on social media. And that's when I reached mm -hmm. out to you. I love that. Aren't we all, I mean, I think that's one of those life reminders that we're all connected in some way mm -hmm. and the way that we show up for one another and the power of connection and the power of networks and nourishing them. Chad and I have been deeply become deep, deep, deep friends. We literally call each other brother and sister, but we are not biologically related. We just show up for each other in such a deep, rich way that it feels that way for both of us. But yeah, we got connected years ago through a speakers association that we're both part of. And Which one? it's um, called National Speakers Association. So and I'm the chair of the National Speakers Association Youth Program. There you go, love. <laughs> See, here, we're just already all connected. So we got connected that way. And then over the years, we've done some different projects together. He's spoken at some of my events and I've spoken at some of his event things and gatherings, and we just have a really deep, rich friendship. And so we're actually going to dinner on Wednesday. So tomorrow, so it'll be fun. I'll tell him, I'm like, guess I met one of your friends and she's now connected. So small world, as we like to say. Well, just to add in, we'll get right into your interview, but just to add a little mix and is that Chad, the reason I know Chad is because Chad was dear friends with my father, who mm -hmm. it was a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. They met through the National Speakers Association as well. And they were dear friends. And my father passed away uh, seven years ago. And mm -hmm. up until the time, thank you, up until the time that he passed, I was a full-time attorney. That, that was the work mm -hmm. that I did. Mm -hmm. And when he passed, I had this strong calling to continue his legacy, to continue the work that he does. And because of that, I switched careers. I, I changed everything and I, and I dove deep into this, into this arena and therefore stayed connected with Chad. And because of his friendship with my father, he's always been very kind to me and has always uh, mm -hmm. supported me. And when I asked him to come on, you know, he, he didn't even question it. He was just so giving and so generous with his time. So that again, you know, this, these are the, when you attract good people and you have a good environment, your network starts to grow in such a beautiful, positive way. So even though you and I haven't actually met, uh, we, we are already connected, which is. I know. I, I feel that. And I think, you know, it's, I was listening to a podcast recently. And one of the things that I teach often in my own coaching is the power of you know, taking great care of your relationships. And not that that's unique to me. I think we all understand that. 
but the power of, you know, nourishing your, your network, showing up and adding value, being a go giver as sometimes the language, I forget the author that says Bob, that. Bob Thank Berg you. also I'm is like, your friend oh, of mine. He's so good. <laughs> but just talking about being a giver. And I think that's also one of the reasons when you study success, right? Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. Well, one of the ingredients of a successful life is having rich relationships. And mm -hmm. one of the ways you have a, how you create rich relationship is you show up as a giver and you're generous. And as we're talking about our mutual friend, Chad, and it seems like you embody this and the power of living that is being someone who's regularly giving and adding value to people. You create a rich life right? And the way that you create, I worked for one of my, before I went out on my own, I've been self-employed 13 years now. And prior to that, one of the groups I worked for was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and his brand when it was, you know, on the rise and on fire and all of that. And I remember one thing he taught me, Carol, where he said, your network equals your net worth. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's the original creator of that statement, but just the power of you know, having rich relationships and being a giver and being someone who shows up to add value to other people, to humans, to groups, to online, like this series you've created is just simply to add value to people. And the power of when we live that way, you have a really rich life, but all of us are in the people business, every single one yeah. of us, but whether we're an attorney, we're in real estate, we're a life coach, we're in, you know, health and wellness products were whatever we're up to in life. We're all in the people business. So similar to you and I getting connected, it's like, yeah, great. Let's do this because other connections. Right. And it's always a relationship. That's Absolutely. why when sometimes people say business isn't personal, it's like, oh no, no, no. It's always personal. Absolutely. It's a relationship. Right. And I would say, you know, to dive into our self-care conversation, yeah. you, you touched upon success and, and we're here to talk about self-care today. And I would suggest that a, that a huge part of self-care is having rich relationships. Mm -hmm. It's creating people that are supportive of your life, that are, that are, that are supportive of your dreams that are co-dreamers with you. Um, what, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I think that again, rich self-care, my, my girlfriend, Kate Strong, she calls it social self-care is that mm -hmm. you also relationships, the way that having rich or nourished relationships and time with people who nourish you and fill you up is part of, you know, again, a, a healthy, thriving life. I love talking about self-care and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a business coach that mostly I get hired to help people grow their sales, grow their business. But so much of, I like to say your number one sales strategy, right? is to have a full cup. Your number one sales strategy is to be so vivacious, to be so radiant, right? That it's like your energy. I love to say everything is energy, right? That's worth writing down. Everything is energy. And then when you read that backwards and energy is everything, mm -hmm. energy is your gold mine. Energy is your trump card. Energy is, wow. I remember again, a different sales trainer years back tried to recruit me and he's a, a great friend. He would say the person who comes to the sales interaction with the most energy wins. And so when you think about self-care, self-care, absolutely, it can be fun. It can be joyful, of course, right? But it also is foundationally you being in alignment with yourself and being in a place where it's like your, your root system is so well nourished that you're growing and blooming, so to speak. And again, the power of energy is no matter what any of your goals are for today or for 2023, you might have various different goals. Oh, I want to write a book or I want to lose 30 pounds or I want to move into my dream home or attract the love of my life or I want to rank advance in my company or get promoted or whatever your goals might be. We have different goals here, but what we all have in common, you'll need energy to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. And that's where the self-care comes in is self-care isn't selfish. It's actually quite spiritual. That's something we can talk about if interested but self-care is, is also how you create and increase self-confidence and self-esteem. It's also though, again, it's like the energy, it's the jets, the rocket fuel for all the other goals that you want to achieve, right? You think about it that way is because sometimes people will say to me, you know, if I work with someone or I'm with a group long enough, time will always come up. I don't have enough time, right? Like how many of you have felt stressed about time in the last seven days? Granted, we <laughs> are in December. December is its own little anomaly because all the hubbub and all the concerts and the Christmas gatherings and so forth. But 
how often all year round are we saying, oh, I'm so busy or I don't have enough time or I'm stressed or I'm out of balance. And we're regularly saying we don't have time, but haven't we all had the experience where say we wrap our work day, whether we're self-employed like myself, or you work at a, uh, for a company, an office or whatever you might be up to and you wrap your work day, so to speak, and you might have three or four hours that you could still in the evening work on your other goals, but you're just cooked. You're tired and you're like, no, nope, I'm going to sit on the couch and eat chips and scroll my phone, right? Because yeah. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And so then I often like us to reframe. Again, the question is, do I have enough energy to achieve my goals? We often say, do I have enough time? But sometimes we run out of gas or energy. We might still have two or three hours or even an hour here or half an hour here, but we're just so zapped that we don't have the energy. And so often we don't have time management problems. We have energy leaks. We have energy gaps, or we're just simply cooked and we don't have the energy to get the things done that we need to do. So I'm going to take you back and I want you to define what you consider self-care to be. Mm. What is your definition of self-care? Because I think it's a word that's become very popular, but yeah. what does it mean really? Mm hmm I like to look at self-care as, again, it's a, it's a resource or it's a fuel is that most people, what you're after is, is the human, I wish we were here for like three hours, but what we're <laughs> after is the human experience is someone's sense of self, sense of self or self-confidence will determine what they go for or achieve in this life, right? Okay. So we're going to just get underneath it. And so when you would say, like one of my early mentors would say this to me, you will perform to your self-esteem, what you think you're worthy and deserving of in a relationship, what you'll tolerate or expect in a relationship, your standards in any relationship, romantic friendships and so forth, your money and your bank, um, you know, your financial life has so much to do with, again, how you see yourself, how you feel or what you think you're worthy or deserving of. And whether you'll risk, right? How much risk you'll take. And risk is essential for creation of a big, beautiful life or the things you want or publishing that post to publishing that book to asking for the sale. Your self-esteem is running the whole show, the whole show, yeah. your self-concept. And so what you're creating or experiencing, tolerating, receiving, activating and experiencing foundationally, you're the nucleus. And so when I look at self-care, self-care is one of the ways we reinforce you're already worthy. I want to make sure it's really clear. You don't earn your worth. You don't, you know, there's nothing you could do to be more worthy as a human, but what is shifting and changing all the time are your feelings of self, your self-confidence. And so one of the ways that you make intentional, and I love that's one of my favorite words on the whole planet is intention. You make intentional deposits into your self-worth into your self-love, therefore into your goals, into your relationship is that you show up for yourself. And that's where I look at self-care as the fuel in the tank is I look, maybe you're all a gorgeous Porsche or Range Rover or Ferrari or whatever your dream car might be. And some of you might be like, I'm not motivated by a dream car. Okay. But follow me for the example. You're a gorgeous Ferrari yet you still have to have fuel in the tank, no matter how amazing the vehicle is. All of you are this incredible vehicle. You're this vessel. You're a God or goddess in human form. Like you're this, a divine part of the divine. Like, oh my gosh, you're this amazing human walking around that no one will ever be just like you. You're this incredible limited edition, but you still have to have fuel in the tank. Mm. And so it's the power of, do I honor myself? Am I, are my needs worthy and valuable? And I get, sometimes it's like, why well, I have young kids. I have a full life. I get it. And how important it is. It's not always about quantity of time, but it is about consistency of habits that we're more often than not investing in ourselves, body, mind, heart, and spirit. I do have a free download on my website that makes this a little bit easier to go through and see it in visual terms. Mm -hmm. And that download is, you can find my website is tiffanyspeaks.com is my main hub. There's a tab that says free resources under that tab. If you scroll down, there's the second offering that says the self-care guide. And when you download that, you'll see a gorgeous graphic my designer created. And it says body, mind, heart, and spirit. 
is that self-care again is a combination of a few ways of investing in our well-being. But I love that question is I look at self-care as a catalyst. You know what a catalyst is, right? A catalyst has the power to create change. It's it's the influence. It's when you add salt to, to food or to things and the different salt makes in any recipe, right? There's certain things, even if again, you're, you're baking a gorgeous cake, there's certain things they have to go in there. Well, I look at self-care as the same way as a catalyst to helping you shift, increase, up-level, activate your sense of self. And it gives you more energy. And again, energy is vivacious. It's magnetic. We live in a vibrational universe. And so you don't have to be the smartest person in the room or the person that has the Ivy League education or came from the right, perfect family. What matters a whole lot to your influence is the energy that you bring to any space. And that's where, again, self-care is like the rocket fuel or the catalyst that helps us have the energy and increase our sense of positive feelings, which all of us, whether we like to admit it or not, we follow through on anything based on emotion. Mm -hmm. Your emotions run the show, right? And it's like, whether we feel like it or not, and especially when you're self-employed, but even when you're corporate employed, like our levels of follow through at work, our levels of follow through with our goals has everything to do with how you're feeling about self, everything, the way you show up in your partnership, And I'm a big fan of simple math. When you feel better, do you show up better? A hundred percent. And so for me, I actually look at sometimes the conversation is self-care selfish. You know, I'm taking time away from my family or my children, or, you know, it's, it's all about me. No, it's not all about you. But the reality is, is your energy influences everyone you do life with your kiddos, your office mates your friends, your online world, right? Your partnership, your sweetheart, your dating life, your energy is, is this magnet or repellent Mm -hmm. based on how we're showing up. And so I actually think one of the kindest things you can do for your partner, you can do for your kids, you can do for your teammates, so to speak, is that you up level and commit to having excellent self-care for yourself. I'm curious your thoughts on that. Well, I totally agree with you. And, and yes, when we, when we implement self-care and we create energy in our lives, and of course that's contagious. And I always say con- energy is contagious both ways, right? So who has the more contagious energy? If you've ever been in a room where there's somebody who has very negative contagious energy, that's equally as contagious as the positive. So I always say, you know, if you're going to be in a room, be the positive contagious energy, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing I'm curious about is in your personal life, have you always naturally implemented self-care or is this something that you discovered, uh, you know, when you were, when, before you were on, on your own and you were your own entrepreneur and you were working for these, you know, for these companies and you're pressed for time, did Mm -hmm. you manage to take care of yourself? Mm Mm-mm. No, again, we often teach most what we need to learn, right? I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase and it's like, so the, the concept is like why I'm so passionate about it. I'm really passionate about it because I think about my 14 year old self, my eighth grade self, and that girl had no self-confidence, no self-esteem, right? I grew up here in Salt Lake City, Utah, which has evolved a whole lot over the years, but growing up in Utah and I'm a natural redhead, right? I hated being a redhead, hated it, right? Like, I don't know if any of you are here that are live, like, did you love, think about, did you love junior high? Anyone, would you say that in the chat box? Cause you might be a unicorn. You might've loved junior high. Anyone love junior high that's here with us live? <laughs> I would love I, to. Absolutely, yeah, Francis, no in all caps, right? Like <laughs> no way. And I just think about my eighth grade self who also had braces. I just had braces put on about a month ago. So you know, we're navigating that round too, but I just think about now you my- get to show up to braces with self-confidence. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm like, I'm rocking these things. We're just going to go for it, you know, but I think about like my eighth grade self and how often I still at times feel like her. She's highly insecure. Am I wearing the right thing? How do I look? How do I sound? Am I included? Do I belong? Where do I stand? Like, all the ways of that old emotion in new circumstances. Because a lot of times when we feel an emotion 
And now I'm a grown woman and I sometimes still like my junior high self. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Like yeah, of course. old emotions, old wounds, new circumstance. And it's like, oh, okay. So now the difference though, between my eighth grade self and the woman and over the years in my teens and through my twenties, I had so much judgment on myself, right? And so much judgment and, and harshness towards myself, very critical. And now more often than not, when I insecurities, my doubt comes up, my exhaustion, whatever I tune in. This is a great question. I love to share when we talk self-care, if you guys want to write this down. And the question is this, what do you need, sweetheart? What do you need, sweetheart? So now I come home. It's a great inquiry question to when my own stuff is up and I ask, what do you need, sweetheart? And I've learned to to be more nourishing and connecting and inquisitive when those emotions are up and then honoring what that says. And sometimes that voice says, I just need to feel connected or I need more rest or I need to move my body or I want to connect with a friend or family member or something like, I just tune into that. And so I think what matters is write this for me in your notes, loves, is we practice. I don't have perfect self-care, but I practice self-care right? It's just like getting on the yoga mat, literally and symbolically is we practice and we come back to those habits over and over again. So I'm going to challenge you on this one, because this is something people go through. When you ask, what do you need, sweetheart? Some Mm. people think I need chips or I need and get them or I need to just overeat or I need to just binge on this, right? So I wonder where is that shift where, where you say, what do I need, sweetheart? Mm-hmm. You, you change it from what is comfortable. Yes. To what you really need, which may be, yeah. which may be love, rest, yes. energy, right. But, but, but your default is what I need is McDonald's or a right. Diet Coke or some, you know, something. Right. So what do you and- think of that? Well, and truthfully, sometimes I get the McDonald's. I mean, hello, those French fries are something else, right? Like I'm not a, fr- and again, it's having a healthy relationship with yourself where for me to get the cheeseburger or fries occasionally or the chips or the treats, because sometimes that is it. It's like, I'm going to, I need to Netflix binge. I'm going to, I'm going to watch a show and have hot cocoa. I mean, we're in a snow globe in Utah right now. It's literally snowing outside. We got dumped on all overnight. And so it's like, we have a white Christmas happening here. I'm like, I'm going to get in cozy socks and have hot cocoa while I work today. Right. Kind of thing. Love it. I think to what Marley's saying in the chat box, that speaking to yourself with kindness changes the game. So even if my young, if myself asks for, and I have developed so much self-trust over the years with practicing, with rituals, with habits where in tuning into my intuitive voice, where if I truly want the cupcake or the treat, I don't pun it. I don't talk myself out of that. Now, here's a great, another discernment question is I ask myself, because to your point, sometimes is I'll ask myself, is this self-care or is this me numbing out? Mm. Right. We all numb out at different times and even not judging that to Marley's point. I don't want to put judgment and harshness because that's like glue. You don't remedy anything by condemning it, but to discern is this self-care or numbing out? Because we all have, if we're honest with ourselves, we have numb out techniques or avoidance behaviors, don't we? I mean, we're yeah. truth tellers in this space because that's true self-care is we tell the truth to ourselves and we say, okay, that's powerful. And we look at that for ourselves and we go, okay, I'm going to be aware of that. And so sometimes it's like, yeah, if it feels like self-care versus If I'm numbing out in some way, I'm just more conscious of that. But I think about, again, it's, it's regularly showing up for yourself, for your body and with your body, that looks like good sleep or quality sleep. For some of you, you might need to declutter your bedroom. And that's what's getting in your way right now is you're like, oh, my bedroom needs a a refresh or I need to have a technology curfew, right? Or I need to have a turndown. We've probably all heard around a self-care habit of a morning ritual, starting your day with intention, but also having an evening ritual where the way you put yourself to bed, it, that really matters as well. And so that, that influence and so forth is like, you're going to take care of our sleep. 
We're going to move our bodies regularly, right? A couple of years ago, I made a declaration. I move my body every day. And there are some days I don't move my body, but definitely more common in my week as I'm moving my body every day. But when I changed that, I don't know about the rest of you, but my past self exercise or movement had to look a certain way. It was like a 90 minute commitment of get changed, drive to the gym, do a formal, you know, a big workout cardio and some weights and then drive home and change. And it was all or nothing. Well, that's perfectionistic thinking. It was either 90 minutes or nothing. So I move my body every day. Sometimes that's a 20 minute bike ride on my Peloton. Sometimes that's, you know, yoga in my home off that app, or it's getting on a walk or a hike or going out to a yoga class. Right. But some kind of intentional movement is happening almost every day, if not every day. And I changed that thinking. And so it's showing up for your body. Right. It's then showing up for your mind and your mindset. Are you regularly listening to or reading good nourishing material? Right. And that you're nourishing. I love the word nourishment when we talk self care, too, is ask yourselves, y'all, this question what nourishes me? Body, mind, heart, and spirit. And looking at mind or mindset is, what are you reading or listening to or your meditation practice or journaling, a gratitude journal, things that are mindfulness practices or mindset nourishment practices is so powerful. And then looking at the bottom left quadrant, again, if you download this worksheet, it's on my site, tiffanyspeaks.com under the tab free resources under emotion is I want you to think about your joy and your joy list. Are you doing things regularly that infuse your joy? And that you take care of your own happiness. I had this thought literally yesterday, right? In my, I, I got married earlier this year, as you know, because Chad was posting about that a couple months ago and we've been together a couple of years. And I just reminded myself, my happiness is my responsibility. Whether you have the love of your life in your life or not, your happiness is on you. And sometimes, yes, a relationship can increase happiness. It can add to magnify, but it's kind of like the sprinkles on top, so to speak where you need to show up for yourself and like, what brings me joy? What nourishes my heart and giving yourself that. And then finally, the bottom right-hand quadrant is spirit or spirituality and whatever that means to you, but is your spirit, what helps you nourish your spirit? And so when you think about from your body, sleep and movement and nutrition and hydration, how you're showing up for the physicality. And then we look at our mind and how we're nourishing our mind, how we're nourishing our heart or our joy. And then we're nourishing our spirit and no one again, does these things perfectly. That's why, again, I like to talk about the commitment to practice practices and rituals and where you're working on those habits. I just invite you to think of habits every January. I've, I listen to, or read the book atomic habits by James clear, Such right? A classic. Such, a goodie. Such a goodie. And I've listened to it the last previous three years. So I'll do it again for a fourth year in this January, but that's a great recommendation of thinking about essential habit change. And that when you have habits, your habits equal your results. And so thinking about self-care habits, even if you just decide from this session today, what's one habit, are you going to recommit to or begin start expand or continue doing that nourishes you? Mm -hmm. And then you just give it precedence. I know there's, you could come up with 27 habits, but pick one. Like for me, mine's daily movement that I'm going to be focused on. It's not the only one, but it's the primary one that I've chosen that it's like that habit, that habit is such a give back habit to me. Yeah. Because if I move my body more regularly, I have more energy and remember energy is everything. And the yeah. more energy I have, the more I get done. So it's one of those things that actually has a give back because some things, when we give our time to them, the time spent, sometimes they even deplete us certain activities or tasks. They deplete us versus do they magnify us? Well, me exercise is one of those habits that is a give back. It actually, I get more from taking the time to move my body. I don't know. Can the rest of you relate to that? I'm curious if that's your life experience. Well, and, and actually it's a great, yeah, it's a great opportunity for me to inject this uh, for you, Tiffany. First of all, what you said about the all or nothing, I run a program called core and mm -hmm. everyone who's on here, who's in my core community will, will, will say that I scream it from the rooftops when we talk about not the all or nothing. Um, so I love the concept and I'm totally on board with you. And you said something that I think is so important. And that is that 
sometimes your investment in something is actually depleting, which was something else that I wanted to ask you about because one of the things I've seen in in the work that I do is that oftentimes people are the self care is a push through situation. So you've got to get to the gym. It's that idea of it needs to be 90 minutes or 75 minutes or 50 minutes. It's all sacrificial. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's draining and it's not efficient because you may be checking off the tasks, but I've had people who've told me, all this self-care is exhausting because they're driving 30 minutes to right. get to their life coach. And then they're driving to their personal trainer and they're in a rush. And then they're, by the time that they're done, they're so exhausted with the self-care. They don't have anything. They don't have any energy for anything else. So I love how you are kind of alluding to that is, is it, are the practices that you're you're employing actually nourishing are they efficient and are they giving you the energy that you're looking for because if they're just sucking your your joy then is that really self-care so so what are your thoughts on that yeah well and I think again I want to make I love you're bringing this up I want to make sure we don't turn self-care into one more should right like exactly. another long list yes. of all the things I should do and I'm not doing and now I feel even more guilt right? Mm-hmm. Because we've done so much guilt and shame work already. We're needing to unlearn guilt and shame. And yeah. so I think it's one of those things that again, that's why we tenderly tune in and say, what do you need, sweetheart? And what's relevant and re- real for you today or this week or this month, because it can evolve and change over the years, right? For sure. And some of you are just saying, I just need quiet time. I don't need to do anything different. I just need some time to literally be at peace and have no noise and just connect with my inner self, right. Or my spirit as some of us call that, but it's like, it's the willingness again, that you're your own best life coach. Every single one of you. I love coaching. I love to do coaching. I participate in coaching. I think it's great, but ultimately a great coach is going to teach you how to have a great relationship with yourself Mm. and how to come home internally that you're not lacking anything. Some people really use lack in their marketing. Like, Oh, you're really lacking they're not lacking. They might need support or they might need awareness or consultation to grow or build something intentionally. But the reality is, is tuning back into yourself is what do you need and what I'll show up for you. And the more that you, it's almost like, again, you reparent yourself in a way where you have that awareness. And so if you start to feel exhausted by all the self-care things, that's simply feedback to saying, Hmm, maybe I'm on someone else's expectation list or a should list versus what's authentic to me. Mm. And that you go, this is what feels really good and nourishing. Again, I like you to ask yourself the question, what nourishes me? Body, mind, heart, spirit. What nourishment am I craving more of? And the more that you listen to yourself and honor what you need, the more you build self-trust. And self-trust is everything to what you want to create next in your life. Everything you want to manifest next has to do with self-trust. Do I trust myself? Because some of you in the past, your issue isn't that, you know, some of you are actually afraid of more success or more growth. And there's a lot of reasons potentially for that, you know, permission, upsetting a dynamic in a relationship, belonging needs and so forth, especially as women, women succeeding and being massively successful is actually for a lot of women quite fearful because it's like, Ooh, I might get kicked out of the club. I don't know. I don't want to stand out. I don't want to be so bright. We were so conditioned growing up, most of us to fit in versus to stand out. Mm -hmm. And so success can bring all kinds of things, you know, up for us, right. For sure. But it's just, again, the willingness to, to learn, to trust yourself and everything you want to manifest next is like, do I trust myself? But sometimes some of the ways we get ourselves in in trouble in the past is we lose our boundaries. We just, it's like, we're willing to like stay up late all, you know, or do all the things or we're attached or tethered to our technology to grow the sales and grow the business. And so really sometimes what needs to get cleaned up there is wait, no, I'm going to do this differently moving forward. I'm going to show up and have my own back and take really good care of me. Therefore I have the trust that I can absolutely welcome in more success, more opportunities, more experiences, because I know I'm not going to abandon myself and my needs at the expense of everyone else's approval and their needs and their validation. Does that make sense? And so 
Absolutely. That's why when self-care is such, it's self-care and we can talk about, oh, well, I'm going to get, you know, go to get a massage or do these things. Yes, it's that, but it's so deeply connected to self-trust, to self-honoring, to our self, you know, I love you use the word core to our core sense of self and esteem is a lot of it's like, do I honor myself? Do I show up for myself? I love that. And, and, and it's what you said at the beginning, which is, it's really about having, it's about building on that self-esteem. So in your personal life, I would love to know, because I think it's so important for, for those of us that teach these kinds of things that we also share where we, where we struggle or where our challenges are, because I think in, in those examples is our biggest life lessons. So how have you managed this, you know, your success and your self-esteem? Because, you know, you're a solo entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you built a beautiful practice. And I know from this work that when you are in this kind of work and you're, you're always doing it, it's, it, it's exhausting as well. And it is taxing and it, and there is a lot of pressure on you. Um, and it's, and, and you're in a service business. So you give a lot mm -hmm. of your energy to mm -hmm. your clients. So how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your, and build on that self-esteem? Well, again, I get, I get to be a work in progress. And so do each of the rest of you. I love when I like said that progress over perfection in the notes there in the chat box is I get it wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think that's important, but through my own learning is I've learned, okay, what's my bandwidth right back in 20, I was having this conversation with a book agent yesterday. I'm being courted to write a book and they want to be part of that and be the one that takes it to the world. And we'll see, but we are literally having this conversation yesterday is in 2016, I made some big changes in my business. In 2016, I was on an airplane every week to speak on another stage, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, my speaking, I was speaking for Dave Ramsey's group and all kinds of conferences. And I just had a lot, which I'm so grateful for, right? That's not a complaint. Let me make sure I'm so clear. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. But it also got to a point, Kara, where, and, and this is again, back to self-esteem. I mean, can we just get so... I mean, I'm in my, basically you're in my living room right now. My home office is in a transition. And so you be, welcome to my home. I wish we were sitting on the couch, all of us having a hot cup of cocoa or hot or hot coffee or your, your hot warm beverage of choice. And I really got honest with myself. I had an experience in 2016. I was on a flight to Nashville and then up to DC for two different speaking engagements back to back. And I'd had this thing happen with my mom and she was okay, but it really rattled me. And I just remember I got really clear and I started, I was like, how happy am I? And even though it felt great to be wanted, right? Don't we all want to feel wanted if we're honest? Mm -hmm. And I'd gotten divorced a couple of years before I'd gotten divorced in 2014. And I really kind of threw myself into my work. And even though it's really good work, you know, it's coaching, it's mentoring, it's, it's speaking, it's helping people with their lives. And that's really fulfilling. It was so much at the expense though of, I think a lot of me, again, I was hiding. I was hiding behind the work. I didn't want downtime to feel the sadness, the grief, the loneliness of my personal life. And so that was a huge catalyst where I really got honest in all that flight time. You know, you have a lot of time to think on a flight. I mean, you can also watch movies and work or sleep, but I just had some thought time and I really was like, how happy are you? And how much of this is you love to do this work and how much of this is you don't want to feel loneliness? You it's don't want numbing that you were talking about. Yes. Sis. And I really got honest that a lot, you know, some of it is there. I truly have a passion for this work. I do. It's so it's essential to my soul. Like it's not, it's the thing I do, whether I get paid to do it, not get paid to do it. It's like, it's just, I love it. And not, or I also have clarity that the discernment has shifted for me that for a while, it was a big way that I was getting my own self-esteem needs met. I felt really wanted on a stage in a room. And, you know, you go and you get a lot of, oh my gosh, this was great. You changed my life. This is amazing, blah, blah, blah. And then you go back to the hotel room by yourself, or I came home to an empty house. And it was just a lot of awareness. And so when you're self-employed entrepreneurship, I love if you're passionate, I'm passionate. 
but I've also done a lot of work since then that wake up call years back. And then I got really clear and now I will never travel like that again for work. Mm. I'll still do some gigs on an airplane. You know, I love virtual too, but even then it's like, I'm really clear and I'm really protective of my calendar and how much I say yes to. And so some of it through trial and error, right? But all of us want to feel wanted. We all want to feel validated. We all want to feel like we're we're wanted, loved, and that we, every human has that need. There's just different ways to get those needs met. Mm. And I came more, I started practicing coming more inward for validation. I started coming more home to me, to self, to goddess, and to my relationship with God of looking for that. And that's still an ongoing practice, but I definitely have such more clarity and I have so much more self. Again, I have so much more self of affirmation and showing up for me. I still, of course, love when someone's like, oh my gosh, or my sweetheart's like, you're beautiful. You're amazing. Or someone says a kind thing or writes you a card or send, you know, again, like love feels amazing, but give yourself the love. And when you give your, here's the key, you guys, Guys, get this what I'm saying when you give yourself the love you're not as as an as easy to fall into some of those traps or fall down those rabbit holes where you're going to hustle for approval and overwork yourself and try to get the validation because if you feel so much more your own sense of self is well nourished then you're not so desperately clingy and hungry to get it somewhere else I love that and I think everybody probably needs to hear that. I'm, I'm sure you can all relate on on one level, and and I'm also thinking, you know, you said you got divorced in 2014, and now we're here celebrating just shy of a couple months of your of a new marriage for you. Yeah, I was never going to get married again, by the way. So be yeah. careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, and then you said, and then you said in passing, well, you know, my husband or my sweetheart is not responsible for my happiness. I'm responsible for my own happiness. And I think the woman that showed up for marriage in 2014 or for divorce is very different probably than the woman that's showing up for marriage today. And sometimes that shift even happens with the same husband, right? You can, you can have a new marriage when you're a different person, even if you're still married to the same person. Mm right? But you had a metamorphosis of self. And by doing that, now you can show up in a relationship in a totally different energy, how, how you said. Um, so I, I, I wonder, you know, what, what, your, what your advice is to, to women who have felt that maybe they're not supported in their relationships, or they don't feel like they have rich relationships, and maybe don't have the self-care because they don't feel they have the support surrounding that self-care. What, what would you say to those women? You know, I have to say, you asked some of the richest, deepest questions I've ever had in an interview. And I've been on a lot of interviews. So I just want to acknowledge y'all are in the right community. Hang out with this woman because she has richness, Thank right? You. Thank Seriously. You. So, but I would say, I love that you're saying this is that whether you're in a partnership or not, or you're in a partnership, you're not sure is going to last, whether you do or don't, it's like choose in right now today to say, I'm going to show up better for me. Because sometimes we do, we come into a, a new relationship. And when a relationship's new, right, that honeymoon phase, and it's like, oh my gosh, you like water. I like water. You love to eat tacos. I love to eat tacos. <laughs> like we, you know, we have so much in common, like because you're, you're just, oh, and I love that. And that those experiences and feelings can continue, right? If we're doing the same actions and behaviors, but all relationship, if you're in them long enough, they will trigger you, whether that's a friendship, whether that's a, a partnership, a sweetheart, romantic. And, and I think knowing that it's like your partnership and that opportunity to grow, but absolutely is that no matter who you're with, if you're going to choose to be in partnership, because that's always a choice, you don't have to, or you're going to be in deep friendships with people. The reality is, is that, are you going to show up for you? Is going to be part of your journey. I think that's part of everyone's journey. Not everyone knows that's part of their journey, but it's like, you can change husbands or wives or girlfriend or boyfriend. You can change jobs. You can change career paths. You can move homes, but and, and sometimes truly you do need to get out of the environment you're in. Right. There are things as toxic relationships and toxic environments, but 
often the dynamic is that you're saying, guess what? I'm going to change me because it's the only thing I have control over. And you all are, are a huge influence to that relationship. And so if you're in a relationship, you're considering getting out of or leaving, I'd say decide for the next 30 days, ideally 90 days, but 30 days we can all typically get our mind around is like, I'm going to go all in for me in for those 30 days, meaning I'm going to show up and I'm going to move my body regularly. I'm going to take time to pray and meditate, maybe do my gratitude journal. I'm going to do some things off my joy list or maybe meet a girlfriend for lunch. I'm going to do some things that fill my own cup. Because sometimes if we, if you come to relationship, like, Hey, fill me up, mm -hmm. that's exhausting for your partner, number one. And they can't, no person can sustain that long-term. And so it's like the choice is I'm going to show up for me. And then yes, me and my partner, we do show up and love each other because we're very much committed to the partnership and I'm committed to his happiness. I want him to be happy. He wants me to be happy, but that's different than you're the source of my happiness. Do yeah. you see the difference? Oh, yeah. We magnify together and we invest in each other. We intentionally, again, because I love that word, we show up within each other intentionally, but he's not the source of my happiness. No one outside of you. It's like coming home to that. And I know there's layers to that because in my, the, out of the, in my, I'm also going to say, yes, I want you to be in partnerships and friendships where they are nourishing to you. Mm. I just want you to first ask before you're looking at the partnership is, am I nourishing to myself? Right. Before we're putting my, my partner on the witness stand or the friend or the person who's not showing up for us or that we're feeling that hurt or we're in strife or contention with, or we're just, it's sometimes it's not even that much. It's just, we're not feeling is before we put them on the witness stand is come home to some self-reflection is, am I nourishing me? Am I loving me, liking me? Am I telling myself you sexy, cute thing? And am I doing kind things for myself versus I need someone else to do them for me? And some of that's about permission, right? Is give yeah. yourself permission. I'm going to take better care of me. I'm going to date myself. I'm going to take myself on some dates. I'm going to buy myself flowers. One of my own things on a joy list. This is a great activity to take out of the session is to practice over the next few days. Start on a blank sheet of paper draw a line straight down the middle of that piece of paper at the top, right? My joy list. Oh my God. I have that in my, in my program yes. joy audit. Yes. Same thing. We're so so nice. the top left-hand side, write a dollar sign. And these are some things that cost money and then top, right, right? No. And then the dollar sign. So you have come up ideally with 24 things, 12 things that cost money, 12 things that don't. But you start to be like, hey, I'm going to buy myself my favorite cupcake or buy myself flowers. My sweetheart regularly does buy me flowers or a poinsettia because I said, oh, I love poinsettias and it showed up. And I love that. But I also, even in partnership, I sometimes still buy myself flowers. And we're and usually, you know, we're talking Trader Joe's at checkout and they're like nine, 10 bucks or, or so. Sometimes I send myself flowers from the florist, but over the years, I've done that. It's just doing the things off your joy list where you're like, I'm responsible for my own happiness. Mm. Now, sometimes we don't like that because we're still attached to, no, I want to be saved. Hot damn. Can I tell you when I was getting divorced? I'll tell you this and then we'll, we'll wrap with this or any last thought that you want to share. I want to hear it. But when I was going through my divorce, as I mentioned in 2014, and, and that was not an easy decision, right? I don't, I think anyone who's been through that and, and, um, you know, just oh, the whole process and, and there was grief involved, right? Because it's still the loss of a relationship and, and so forth. And I'd gone through a lot and I was now kind of coming out of the other side of that. And I was feeling optimistic a bit more and more hope and, and freedom and energy. And I remember being in the shower one day, right? Where a lot of our spiritual downloads happen, right? It's like, <laughs> it doesn't always happen when we're in prayer or in the temple or in a church or something it does, but I'm in the shower where again, a lot of those things come and I don't know how, but the thought process started where I, I started to have the thought process, Carol, where it was like, it was kind of almost like this, oh, I'm so glad I'm finally free. And, and now maybe I can meet, meet the right one. Mm. Yes. Right? I mean, again, this is eight years ago. I've, I've evolved and grown a lot since then, but ooh, maybe now I can meet the right one. 
And out of nowhere, spirit, you know, how spirit t- communicates yes. to me is just an impression. And I had this impression was you already know them. And then my mind was like, Ooh, I wonder who it is. Like someone in my network, I already know them. And I'm like, Ooh, and I'm in the shower, you know, Ooh, I wonder who it is. Is it, you know, gosh, who would it be? Is it maybe that person or maybe my, my best girlfriend's brother who I've always thought super cute or, I mean, who is like, Ooh, I already know them. Like, it's like, Ooh, the great, like, Ooh, who is it? Who's the magic, magic, right one. And immediately spirit communicates back to thought says it's you. Hmm. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. But if I'm, I'm transparent, right. We got to be truth tellers. There was part of me that was like, really ticked about that though. Yeah. The girl that still wanted to be rescued by the knight on the white horse and like the fairy tale, I'm going to be, you know, oh, the right, the one, the one that's going to fill me up forever and just make me feel so loved and so complete. And I never feel any of those negative feelings again. Cause I'm just so loved. Cause if I'm with the right one, I'm never going to feel negative feelings, right? Wrong. Mm. Right. Cause we're evolving and it. So I was partly ticked and bummed, like want, want, like it's me. And then the other part of me, yes, it was liberating. Yes. It was freedom because it was truth. And it was, yeah, it's you. And it was like, oh, well, yeah. Okay. I guess I get to learn how to be more intentional and show up more loving for myself. And it was this huge breakthrough moment because I could hold both feelings simultaneously. Partly it was like, oh, I want the right one that makes me feel forever loved and wanted and, and safe and and good. I don't ever have to, oh, I get it. Okay. And the other part of me was like, and we're in truth zone. And this is liberation because the truth will set you free. doesn't mean you always like the truth friends, right? I don't think when that scripture, whether you're Christian or not, it's like the truth will set you free. It's like, it will set you free. Might piss you off first, right? (laughs) But it will, it's like, it's freedom. And it was, oh. So even though now, which I never planned to get married again, and I wasn't bitter. I wasn't, it wasn't, I was never going to get married again. It was just that I'd really kind of made peace with that. And was like, I had a rich life and was dating at different times and some beautiful souls, but just no one I ever really wanted to get that serious with and had, you know, beautiful friends and work that I love and a home that I love. And my, it just kind of created my own life. And then of course, it's like, You never know. Like I met someone that we had this deep, rich connection and it built a friendship first. And then from there, you know, things evolved and it was like, let's get married. But the cool thing is when Brett and I got married and we, we talked a lot about this is like, what will change when we're married? Cause we're already as committed as we were going to be. We're already all in. And it was more of like a, a celebration of our loved ones and friends and family who've championed us and stood with us and been with us throughout our life paths you know, again, getting married older, he's eight years older than me. And, you know, both of us were, you know, we weren't 20 getting married basically. And so, but the beauty of that is like a partnership and a co-creation and he's such a love, he's such a gem. And he has absolutely, he's a gift and expanded my heart and my life and my own work with myself continues on simultaneously. I love that. I love that. And I have, I have two thoughts. Um, yeah. First one is I'm very glad you got married. Uh, there is a uh, there is strong scientific evidence of the power of rituals and mm-hmm. how much we need rituals. And since we're talking about self care, part of a self care practice is creating rituals that serve us. And one of the most beautiful rituals that serve not only you but your community are wedding celebrations. Mm-hmm. They they don't mean anything. They don't change any, I mean, legally, I guess they have some implications, but in reality, like you said, you and your love were already committed to each other. So you didn't need a marriage. You didn't need a wedding. You were still going to commit to each other and live the same way. But, but in participating in the ritual, you brought your, your family into the ritual. You brought your community into the ritual. The celebration is a form of caring for the relationship. So now everyone is pouring their love into your relationship. It's not just the two of you. And that's a, that's one of the reasons why it's, it's, it's a good thing, you know, and not everybody, not everybody needs that or does that, but there is power in, 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 in rituals. And then the second thing that I wanted to share is I have had an aha moment with you. 
And here's the aha moment. So this weekend, last week, last week was my birthday. And wow, I did happy all birthday, love. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm a December birthday too. So yay. What day? The 30th. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm I'm the eighth. So I did several things that brought me joy for my birthday. And on Sunday morning, I love sunrises. I just love them. So I got together with two of my dearest friends, one who's on this call, Daisy, and another friend of mine. And we did a five and a half mile walk to the sunrise, to this place that I love, that's very nurturing for me. It, it, I love it. We did the, we did all the things. We took the pictures with the sun and then we you know, had moments of intention and we loved and we laughed. It was just beautiful. And when I got home, my husband, I showed him the pictures and my husband said, why would anyone ever wake up so early in the morning on a Sunday? Like that was his response, yeah. right? Like, so I remember I put it on, 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 on Instagram. I said, my husband can't understand how I would wake up on a Sunday morning to watch a sunrise. And I can't understand how he wouldn't, mm. right? And then later that day, we went to the theater together. We had this beautiful afternoon with our kids and our family. Thought, oh God, I love the theater. And what I was thinking was not every person needs to fill a need. I've always said this, always, always, always. Not every person needs to fill every need that you have. I've always said, give yourself different friends, different, some friends are to laugh with, others are to brainstorm and mastermind with, others are to play with, right? There's different people that serve different roles in your life. And I've, and I've, I've always said, if you had such, if you didn't have such high expectations for every single relationship where they all have to fill every need you have, then you'd enjoy the good in the relationships a lot more. But the aha moment came in the self-care part, which I'd never made the connection. The mm -hmm. reason that I can have the sunrise walk in the morning with my friends and then have the theater time with my husband and enjoy all of it is because I know what brings me joy. And therefore I find people that are supportive of that. I put myself in situations where I do the things that bring me joy, as opposed to saying maybe, well, I can't watch the sunrise in the morning because my husband's not a morning person. Mm. You know, I take responsibility okay. for the actions that I, that I, for the life I want to live and, and different people serve in different capacities in those in, mm. in that life that I've created for myself, but it's mine. And I just made that aha with you right now. I love that you're having that awareness. And then again, it's like celebrating what is beautiful in that, in your husband and in the partnership and then celebrating the friendships. And I think that when that's such a more holistic way of thinking about it, right. It's like, Oh, cause me and my sweetheart, we have some, we have some similar things we enjoy together and some things that are different. And it's the allowing of like, beautiful, do the things that fill your cup yeah. and the scene of that. And then it's like, sweet, amazing love. You know, I, I just think that it's yes. And yes, it's not either, or is, is my yeah. life richer in this partnership? Yes. And do I need to keep showing up for myself? A thousand percent. It's yes. So and yes. Because we're an individual and we're in partnership. And so it's both need nourishment. The partnership needs nourishment. I need nourishment. Sometimes that includes my partner. Sometimes it doesn't. I love that. I love that. So just to wrap it up, uh, one last question for you. And yeah. that is, if you were to say, I, I, for, for yourself, for Tiffany Peterson, when you, if you were to think about your core and core, by the way, is clarity, organization, resilience, and emotional intelligence. So if you were to t think about your core and how you said like your going back home, what, um, what would be your words of wisdom for yourself in a self for self, for self care? If you were to, to protect the core inside you. Mm -hmm. I love that question. And I think again, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to be in practice of asking the question regularly. What do you need, sweetheart? Tuning mm -hmm. in, asking, right. The asking the, the clarity that it's like, it's connecting the lamp to the electricity. And it's similar for me. That's what prayer feels like is when I'm in prayer to God and whatever that means to everyone, but it's like, it's a way of plugging the lamp into the wall and getting into the electricity is my spiritual connection. Well, that's also a way 
when I ask that question, it's a tune in, what do you need, sweetheart? And then honoring what that might be and nourishing that matched with my practices that do include the quiet prayer, meditation, reading, and journaling, having time. Those are like my gold mine. And a good friend of mine, Trent, Selt, Trent Selt, Shelton says this, he says, protect your peace. And it's like, those things are my peace givers, right? Time for quiet. I'm in prayer and meditation, reading and journaling. And then of course there's other activities, but that time where I can hear myself, I can hear my heart. I can feel impressions. I have that clarity, right? Where it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to protect that. And I'm, that to me is, is how I stay anchored in my core, right? Where I then feel like, okay, I'm in alignment with me, alignment with my source, everything else, even when things are beautiful and amazing, or they're challenging and hard, I'm able to navigate so much more when I feel like I've plugged my lamp in, so to speak. I love that. So yeah. I hope everybody got so much out of this call and they, I hope you guys all plug your lamps in starting yeah. today in the midst of the chaotic December, you still have some time to plug your lamp in and take care of yourself. Uh, for those of you that want to connect with Tiffany, Tiffany, share with us what, how they can find you on your Instagram and your mm -hmm. social media channels. I know your website is tiffanyspeaks.com. I put it on the chat for anybody who needs that. Um, tell, tell us how best to connect with you in the future. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me tiffanyspeaks.com. Again, there's several free resources there. You can find me on Apple iTunes or Spotify, the Tiffany Peterson podcast. My show ranks top 1% around the globe. We have great guests, a lot of content. Instagram is Tiff Peterson or Tiffany Peterson and any of the other channels is great too. But thank you, Carol, for reaching out. I love vivacious women, radiant women that are doing good with their lives and and gathering other great people together. So thank you for being that and, and reaching out. So nice to know you better and spend some time with your community. Wish you all a very happy holiday season and a beautiful new year. I'm excited to see what you choose to consciously create both in your own energy and your goals. So much fun, but glad that you've been here too. And thank you again, Carol, for having me, love. My pleasure. And someone just wrote, I don't know who this is, but they said, listening to this call on a busy work day is self-care for me. Mm. Yeah, so. I love it. Well, nice to meet you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so Bye, much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.